Hello, my name is David Williams from Education Services, and this Learning Byte is about ASPath regular expressions. We're going to talk about how do regular expressions apply to BGP routes, what a regular expression is, and then the components of regular expressions, which will include terms and operators. We'll go through some examples and then we'll show you how to create a regular expression and apply it using a routing policy. So BGP relies on finding prefixes based on AS path information quite often. And so the idea behind regular expressions is to enforce administrative policy and to be able to use this pattern matching engine to find groups of routes based on their AS path. Some common requirements would be such as finding all routes originating in AS1, finding all routes that transited AS100, finding all routes from AS1000, or finding all the routes originating in my own AS. So what is a regular expression? It's a powerful pattern matching engine. There are two types of regular expressions that are supported in the Junos operating system. One is based on the AS path, and the other is on communities. This learning byte is focusing specifically on the AS path regular expression, because there is some slight differences between the two. It works not only on fixed strings, uh, but on variable patterns of text. As we said, there's two combinations uh, that make up the regular expression. One is the text itself and then the operator. And then it allows things to be found in context, not as isolated instances. More examples of that coming up. So we'll start out with what makes up a regular expression. There will be the term, which identifies the AS string, and then the operator. A couple examples are shown on the slide. It could be the most basic, such as just a single AS number, 1024, or a complete AS path. For clarity, we're reading these examples from left to right. So an example for a complete path would be 1024, followed by 2685, followed by 3957. In order to make things a little bit easier, we can represent any single autonomous system with a wildcard character. The wildcard character is represented by a dot. The significant thing in regards to Junos regular expressions is the fact that unlike some other vendors, the dot represents not a character but represents a single AS. The example on the slide shows 1024 followed by any single AS followed by 3957. Let's take some examples of operators. Operators immediately follow the term. So you can see that some of these can be quite interesting. 1024 question mark 2685. The question mark simply means zero or one repetition of 1024. The pipe allows you to do logical ors between two different values. So for example, it could be from AS1024 or from 2685. And then the last thing is you can apply a range. So for example, a range from 1024 through 2685. Can have one or more term and operator pairs in a particular AS path regular expression. The operators listed here are some of the most commonly used ones and as you can see there's multiple ways to complete a similar pattern match. We'll start out with the numeric values uh, which will be represented as an M or an N value. The first one M comma N will match at least M being a numeric uh, and at most N repetitions of a term. 
M itself will be exactly that number of repetitions of the term. M comma will be M or more repetitions of the term. Now we have some other representations that we can go through that have some similar match uh, capabilities. The star matches zero or more repetitions of the term, or you can equate that as zero comma in parens. The plus sign matches one or more repetitions of the term. The question mark matches zero or one repetitions of the term. Lastly, we have some ways to either match one of the two terms on either side of a pipe symbol. You can use a dash to represent a range. You can group terms in parentheses. And also you can indicate a null AS path with parentheses with no space. So we'll start out with some really basic examples to get the ball rolling, and then we'll look at some little bit more complex ones. The first one is the easiest one, which is just I want to match on AS1234. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. If I want to match on zero or more instances of AS1234, I could represent that as 1234 star. Zero or one would be 1234 question mark. Or you can use the other uh, operands, one to four instances of AS1234. One to three instances of AS12, followed by one instance of AS34. You can see how you can bundle these all together to make some complex match patterns. Lastly, the, the last one, a range of AS numbers to match. This regular expression would match AS123, 124, and 125. Some other examples. The second AS must be 56 or 78. And again, for clarity, we're reading these from left to right. The dot represents any AS followed by 56 or 78. The second one is the second AS might be 56 or 78. Again, the dot represents any single AS value, followed by 56 or 78 or not. Remember the question mark is 0 or 1 repetition. All pass from neighbor AS 1234 introduces the concept of the wildcard AS followed by a star which is will match on any condition. Any linked path that contains the list 4, 5, 6 in it anywhere can be represented as dot star 4, 5, 6 dot star. You can use this dot star notation to find simple AS pattern matches. If I want to find, for example, any route that has AS10 in the path, dot star 10 dot star will do the job. How do I verify when I configure all these regular expressions that you know it's actually matching routes in the routing table? Fortunately there's a command called show route AS path regular expression that allows you to plug in your regular expression and it will list the routes that are considered a match. Lastly sometimes you want to advertise routes that are originating from your own AS, but you don't want to pass any transit routes from neighboring ASs. A simple way to do that is to create a regular expression called the null AS. The null AS is just an empty paren in quotations. When we create these regular expressions, we then make use of them by applying them with a routing policy. We're going to be showing you a couple examples of that coming up. So here we go. So step one, we need to create the actual AS path regular expression under policy options. You give it a name and you type in the regular expression. The name itself can be up to 255 characters long. If there's any spaces, then of course you would enclose it in quotations. And then once you have created the AS path by name, you can then apply it by name as a match condition in a routing policy. So here's our first example. We want to match on 
a simple AS string. We're calling this the all the digits route. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's the first thing that we see on the slide is the actual creation of the regular expression under policy options. We give it a name. In this case, we call it digits route. Below is the policy that references it, and we just made it really simple. We have a term called digits that says if it's from the AS path digits route, accept. If not, then reject. And we're applying that as an import policy under BGP. Our second example is pretty similar, where you have now a little bit different though. We have the wildcard match, including a range of 123 through 125. All right, remember, what does that mean? It means that 123, 124, or 125 are anywhere in the AS path. So here's our policy. If it's from AS path, not a good route, then reject which means in this case we're going to be dropping those routes, of course. And then we're again applying that as an import policy under BGP. Lastly, we have the null AS path. And as you can see, to easily find this, show route protocol BGP terse, and we do a kind of a look-see here. We see some routes that have on the right-hand side no AS number. We see just the internal origin code. And all you would do in this case to reference these routes is just to do what we saw on the previous slides, create a null AS path regular expression, and then reference that inside of a routing policy. I want to thank you very much for listening to this learning bite. And of course, you can visit our education services website to learn more about all of the courses that we offer learning paths, the certification program, and of course, more learning bites. Thanks again. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.